The Rockcliffe community in Toronto is particularly at risk of flooding and with the amount of rain that fell last week, this community was hard hit and now there are plenty of questions being raised about the mitigation efforts that were supposed to take place before now. Mold travels very quickly, moisture travels very quickly. The aftermath of last week's intense flooding for Mac Diorio has been a matter of ripping the basement apart and trying to fix the damage firsthand. A massive bin of personal belongings and materials out front, evidence of the destruction, up and down the streets of an entire neighborhood. The water caught me in about 30 seconds. I was uh, unable to get out uh, dry from a four and a half foot deep pit and it was full and after that, that was the house. Yeah, and around the same time, I heard a lovely sound of rushing water, went and checked our bathroom downstairs, and there was lovely poo in my tub. Photos show water throughout the basement and out the garage door, receding from the bathroom, leaving the mess behind. Stories like this have echoed through this part of the city for decades, especially during the historic storm that hit in 2013. The Toronto Region Conservation Authority explains during large storm events, flows are expected to leave the main channel of Black Creek and spill into the adjacent floodplain areas, and this water can impact residents and businesses through surface flows. I manage over there with a three horsepower commercial sump pump with the fire hoses, everything is still in the back. Right. We have a stuff all over the place. But the city over here, like, they don't do nothing. Well, I mean, maybe over here we don't pay property taxes enough. Franco Ruffalo has been through it before and wants to know why nothing has been upgraded. Flood mitigation studies were recently done in the area and recommendations to the city were made in 2022 to modify the Black Creek and Lavender Creek channels, construct a new flood protection wall and make other adjustments over 10 years. The environmental assessment was very comprehensive. It, uh, it outlined about uh, $300 million, like over a period of time, several phases. The first phase is ready to happen now. When asked if the city would consider buying up properties and renaturalizing the area, the answer was no. Instead, it's more residents waiting and wondering what happens when the next flood hits furious that the city has had flood plans since 2014 that would have been sufficient maybe for then or maybe 10 years before then that they have not done anything about. This week, Mayor Chow is also asking that more be done to assess how the city can help personal property in the case of a flood. She's planning on bringing that matter up at City Council on Wednesday. Mark McAllister, City News.